Hi there, a little something different as we kick off the new year. I was having a great conversation during a morning writing session with a couple of friends and we started talking about different tools that we use for how to world build and brainstorm and stay organized. And I learned that a couple of our friends are using um, things like Google Docs or Word documents or text files, all the kinds of stuff that I used. And I discovered this amazing tool called Libsidian that I've been uh, testing for two of my novels and I've been loving the process. So I shared it with them and it just, you could see sort of the lights going off in their eyes. And that just made me think, okay, let me share a brief <clears throat> 15 minute kind of walkthrough of how I've set up Obsidian to work for me in writing novels, just switched off all the stuff that I don't need to see. So it can give you maybe some inspiration for how to get organized um, and how to have an incredible new year with writing your novels. So let me know what you think. And if you use Obsidian, drop a comment and let me know uh, what you end up doing with it, or let us know what tools you're using that you really enjoy, and then maybe share why. Hey friends, so I want to share with you a really delightful uh, tool that I've been using to organize my novels. Um, so when it comes to my novel writing, I've not been able to be as consistent as I wanted to be. So paying for a tool has not proved practical. Um, there's just been dead months where I'm paying for something that I'm not using. And if you're like me, you don't have a five income for that sort of thing. So I needed something free. I also wanted something that would allow me to do kind of whatever I wanted to do. Um, as opposed to a lot of really amazing tools online where you're kind of forced into somebody else's process or there's too many design elements. And for my brain, I just get distracted by the colors, by everything. So I wanted something that I could set up, that I could have more control over, that I could just get in and start creating stuff really quickly. I also wanted something that could act like a wiki. So there are things you can do with Google Docs and so on, but I really wanted something that would allow me uh, more freedom. I wanted mood boards. I wanted Kanban boards. I want to be able to just simply write the novel, um, organize pictures, organize ideas, and do it really easily and really quickly. So here's the tool that I have found. I'll give you a quick walkthrough. Um, I can't show you all of the steps of how to use Obsidian. You'll need to go on YouTube and do your own research and, and stuff for that. Um, but here's an overview on how I'm using it. So for example, I've got this one novel that I, for children that I'm messing around with called so far, Days of Marian Bright. And I've created a mood board, right? Which is lovely. I can do things like take pictures from Google, or in my case, I've generated AI art to inspire myself. And I can just drop them in here before I get a sense of what they are, how I'm going to use them. What I also really like about this, I can take my Pinterest board and I can drop that in there. If I find a piece of music or a YouTube video, I can drop that in here. All of my ideas and research and elements, all of that can just go straight in here. You can then also, they've got this little thing down the bottom, you can add a note where you can type anything into it. You can actually even set a little color uh, for these if you like and make a mini size. And you, it's just like having little sticky notes. You can just drop them right in there. You can flip them anywhere you like. Um, you can also create, uh, if you add a note from your vault, so um, if you are just starting out, you may not have them. But if you do have larger documents, for example, I'm going to pull up something I've written. Uh, here is a character that I've created. So I can take that document and drop it in here. Let's let's say, for example, we zoom to this selection. So pull that right in. And then if I want to, I can go ahead and open it in a new tab and now go ahead and continue typing and working on this document. So as a, a place for mood boards, it is really fantastic because you can just click and drag and move things anywhere and kind of resize them. So that's just kind of, I created the canvas. Um, which is called world building. Uh, and then I made another canvas called characters. And this pulls in all of the characters, as you can imagine, characters I'm working on. I put a little picture for each one. Each one of these is a document and they started out by being a note. So I would just say, okay, I need a character note to start describing the character right in here, you know, describe the character. And then at a certain point decide, okay, this is getting too long. So I'm just going to right click and I'm going to convert it into a file and then it becomes a document. So let's go ahead and do that. And let's call this, you know, test one, two, three. And there it is automatically gets added right there. So I can sit right here in this mood board. Let's say I'm making a magic system and I can create cards for each of the different elements right here, put in a picture. Um, and when it starts getting too long, or if I decide I want everything to be its own little files, I can just right click and do that, convert it into a document. Now for this one, I'm just going to delete that. Um, any one of these, again, you can just right click on them, 
open in a new tab if you want to get into the details that, that you're writing. Or you can just quite simply scroll right down in here to get access to that information. Um, so I did that for characters, and I added a little, little icon for a character. I created a canvas for creatures. Um, not as organized, I'm just dropping stuff in here. Here's one form, they evolve into this form, maybe. Um, if, uh, actually, I can show you another one here, let's say creatures. This one here is more organized, there's a lot more in here. There's like bad things down here, and there's good things up here, and so I'll pair pictures with these things. At some point, I'm going to get more organized, take the picture, turn this into a, uh, convert it into a file, and then drop that image right in there to start pairing things up. But, eh, I'm still kind of figuring it out. You can also take little arrows, and you can indicate, okay, this is going to go, let's say, that's going to connect to that there. And it's a way to show a little bit of organizing. So I'm just going to close that one there. Um, here, for example, you can see how I've done that with location. So I've got a bunch of visual cues to inspire myself for where I'm writing the novel. So for example, characters start here, and then they're going to go there, and then there, and there. And then here's, you can then outline, for example, the whole journey of where it's all going to go. And, um, you know, just keep inspiring yourself. And if you don't have a picture or something, and just link it to a block, adding descriptions, um, fantastic little tool. As a canvas or a mood board, you can do all kinds of, uh, do basically anything you want. Here's the other thing that I like a lot. It's called, um, I've called it scenes. It's a Kanban board. I added a little bit, I tweaked the code a little bit to be a little bit larger for myself, but it actually shows up uh, narrower and um, more shows up on the screen. But it's a Kanban board, which means you can add as many columns as you like. They call them like a list. So let's do one here called test. There it is. It adds a new thing to the side. Going to go, okay, let's say this is going to be, I don't know, maybe we want to do a column here called magic system. And then let's add a card, um, I don't know, firebolts or something. And then you can press uh, either enter or shift enter. And now that's created as a card. You can also right click and make a note from that card. And there it is. Testing. We have now created, let's close that. See how that automatically now links off to that card. Let's go ahead and close that. Close the new tab. Go back to where we were with scenes. So I structured this. I just needed a three-act structure. Um, so I created three columns, and that's a big, uh, simple way for me to get organized with my novel. So um, act one, here's the setup. Here's everything that I can think of for the setup. And then here's everything for the journey. And of course, because each one of these little scenes is a card, you can drag and drop and organize and uh, and delete things. And you can add cards at any point. You can right click and write, let's make a card before, or let's make a card after. So I love the simplicity of this, right? Um, you can add, of course, as many columns as you want, break it into a five act structure and, and so on. And so that is for organizing. And so here's my way of structuring it. I've created canvases because they're more visually easy for me to kind of um, take bits of information like uh, ingredients in, in a recipe and just have fun with them. And then I'll create a folder here called chapters where I'll do chapter one and then just start typing. And it's nice because it has a spell check that's in there. And for me, that's all I need. In fact, excuse me, while I'm writing, I'll often just have, let's say like a location. I'll have this open as a tab here on the side. And then I'm just going to zoom to the thing that I want to see to inspire me while I'm writing. And I might habits of course fill the screen so I can see that here. Now I can see this while I'm writing or uh, you can adjust the uh, you know the width of these uh, see so you can make that a little larger and smaller. So it, for me it's fantastic. You can actually even um, where is it? There's a way like you can pop this out so that it's in its own uh, sitting in its own window put it on a different screen something like that. So those are all the chapters that I'm writing. Then what I did to keep myself organized, I created something called notes. And then here's where all of the bits of information that pull up inside the canvas, they're all available uh, right down here. So here's this character, here's this character and this one, and so on. Uh, same thing for all the creatures that are created. I just list them and just keep coming up with ideas, just list them all here. And then I get sort of an at a glance view of them by using my, my canvas. Uh, same thing with particular items, or if I have like locations, so on. Um, and then just any other just sort of random ideas just all goes in my 
notes folder. So that's the kind of thing I don't need to pay attention to too much. I don't have to really worry about organizing it. That's just where everything goes. Um, and that's that's really it. I For me, I'm loving the simplicity of this. At some point, having it figured it out, it is possible to be able to share this online. And that's one of the things that I loved about Obsidian as not only kind of a, I mean, it's a powerful tool that can do all kinds of things, but uh, I'm using it for writing and for organizing my world building. You can also share it as a wiki online. And so that's something that I want to share. Look at how uh, simple this process is. So let's go ahead and close some of that. Let's go untitled. We're going to call this, you know, let's call this test again. So as we're typing here, I've set this so that it keeps my cursor in the middle of the screen. Uh, you can have it so that it's back up at the top. But let's say we're let's say we're typing about our story, all right, doing some world building, world building, and let's say the characters come to a magical city called, and then I'm going to do I'm going to put two brackets. Oops, not the curly braces. Two brackets, and I'm going to call it um, Greece. Right? See how it has turned it uh, blue. That is automatically creating a link for something like a, a wiki and there they meet uh let's go with chiron there's a character and let's see it's out of that there they meet chiron who hands them the sword of destiny because why not period so what's lovely about this what's happened here is you can then click on these so if you like press control i'm on a pc you press see you go to hover over it it's pretty it click to create so i'll go to create that now i've got a whole new document to host all of my notes about whatever i'm saying with this magical place when i'm done i can close that and then i can come back it says you can see it's now auto added everything as individual documents down the end so you can just go through on a creation spree all sorts of stuff and then when that's all done just drag and drop these so for example pop up in my notes drag and drop these into um, the right folder. So if this is a location, I'm just going to drag and drop. I don't need to get any more organized than that, maybe. Uh, I might come back here to locations, and let's say, you know what? I need to now add my new document because I forgot to do that. So there we go. Greece. It is now added right here. And when I zoom in a bit closer, it'll then start showing me what I've actually put there. So that feature right there of being able to, while I'm typing to interlink things, while you're writing your novel, uh, for example, every time you mention a character, or every time you mention something, if you wanted to, you could interlink. There are some people, you'll see them online on YouTube, who do crazy cool things with all the ton of interlinking that you can do um, as a way to use it as a wiki and to get organized and stay organized. So um, if you want to have, mess around and have fun with this, I'm just going to leave the extra notes here. Um, these are little ways that I am staying organized with my um, process. You can see I've got um, outlines, like for example, this one, my book one here has specific to just this book, and it's just like notes, and here's just more notes, and I need to get it all organized, and I need to put it into Kanban boards to get organized. Here's book one, I'm just messing around like, oh, look, I can do Kanban boards, and I can move things around, and so um, this is a much bigger project, and so I'm easing my way into it. But this is how, for this particular novel, this is how I'm staying organized. And, you know, scenes. And so if you see it to a feature on another writing software, um, I think I've found a way to replicate all of that feature uh, from those other writing softwares and then just do it for free. So uh, those who are a little more advanced to get some of this, I've um, you can browse and turn on community plugins. So watch a 10-minute, you know, walk through and how to get set up with obsidian there's some really good ones out there um so just go ahead and google those um and then there are community plugins so i have turned on a bunch of them like there's file explorer that gives you the option to reorganize and drag and drop things over here on the left and iconize allows you to add little icons to make things a little more visually you know fun you can even add colors to to these icons which is nice Image converter, every time I drop in an image, it'll automatically compress it, convert it to make it a bit smaller. Kanban, that's to be able to have those columns where you can drag and drop scenes and stuff. Um, typewriter mode, that puts your cursor like right in the center of the thing. Um, 
and always keeps your eyes kind of in the middle of the document so you don't have to keep scrolling. And then smart connections, that's just, that's using uh, smart connections and copilot. This is the, one of the last things that I really like a lot about Obsidian. So for example, let's say I'm typing, I'm working on chapter one and I really need ideas. I need help. So what I've done is you, I've hooked up chat GPT to this and there's a, a free plan. And then there's also a, um, I think I'm, I've also put in my credit card. So it like pay a couple of cents every month if I use it. Um, so for example, let's say I'm writing my chapter and I get to the end. Chat GPT can act like a brainstorming buddy and a co-writer. So for example, I can tell it, I can have a, just a random conversation with it right here. Like give me three, you know, three ideas for, uh, let's say food based on Christmas sauce. Right. And I'm not exactly sure what that is. Okay, here we go. It's now just going to invent them and, and list them out. And these can be crazy. And they'd be like, oh, you know, wow, that was, you know, that was great. Um, mix, mix and match them to make them more unique or something, right? Or here, for example, was a question that stopped me from writing a novel years ago. What are the flowers that grow in Northern Europe during the fall, right? I realized I was writing this one scene and I didn't know that answer. I didn't know how to find it out. Now, look at this. Oh my goodness. I now know exactly what these flowers are. And so I can just drop them right into my, you know, right into my, uh, uh, my writing. Now, but here's the other thing that can be really, really cool. You can also change it to active note. And here's where we can, I can ask it questions about chapter one. So for example, give me three ideas to improve my chapter. Let's just see what it says. It'll then read everything that I've got in my chapter, and then it's going to uh, chew on it, think about it, come back and give me ideas. So here we go. Um, for example, develop the character's passion for Christmas. It's like, okay, well, I kind of did that. Add more sensory details. That's always a really good idea. And then it gives a couple of, you know, things to think about. And then introduce conflict or challenge. So these are pretty basic things. So let me try, for example, inspired by the text of, you know, I don't know, this chapter gives me five short, funny things that could also happen to make the chapter longer. And it was actually just messing around with stuff like that, that I started getting ideas for my characters. For example, she's this little mouse. And I was messing around with Christmas carols, like what are fun ideas that could happen in the story based on Christmas carols? And that's when I discovered she has a jingle bell jinx, meaning for some reason when she was born, she can't sing or laugh without sounding like jingle bells. Um, so for example, here's an idea. I never thought about her heading out into the cold, slipping on a patch of ice. I mean, that's kind of, that's not a bad idea. Or while she's busy baking, how about a mouse named Whiskers plays a prank on her, rearranging the ingredient jars? You know what? That's actually not a terrible idea. That's kind of funny. Um, and then it'll just give sort of fun ideas. Or I can also put in here, inspired by, I don't know, J.K. Rowling, or inspired by Michael Crichton, or Robert Louis Stevenson. Give me ideas, uh, something like that. So in terms of a um, brainstorming buddy, rather than bugging your friends or your family, uh, you can now spend a ton more time right here um, in your writing, you know, What's lovely about this is it does not replace your writing. Um, it is a, a co-pilot, somebody who can help you with your writing. So you can then just sort of hide that afterwards. So if this is helpful, I would love to know. Drop a comment below. And um, um, I'd love to see how you end up organizing it. If you end up playing around with it, I literally downloaded it, watched a couple of YouTube videos, and then um, just started messing around with it myself. It's actually really quite easy and simple to get into. I ended up switching off everything because there's all kinds of extra tools in here and stuff like that. So I ended up switching off everything I didn't think I was going to need or use. So you might see some a little more when you get in there. Um, let's see what else. And hey, I'd love to take, you know, take a screenshot. I'd love to see what you end up doing with your, um, with your Obsidian, how you set it up. And if you have questions on this, because we're all trying to figure out our world building together, go ahead and drop them in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to see what you get up to. And um, as you play around with the tool, uh, let's stay in touch and let's inspire each other. So have fun and happy world building.